here in the lab and I'm gonna to talk to you about soldering because on our new strip, the RGB hybrid, which is five colors in one, uh, you are going to need to direct solder. This is 28.8 watts per meter and um, this bad boy, because it's got the five colors in one, it comes with accessories like so um, and uh, no clips or no quick connects on this particular model right now. So the first thing that I'm going to suggest that you have ready is, uh, number one, is a good soldering iron. So uh, something with a small tip. Now this is obviously a platform soldering iron. Um, we've got here a little jig. Um, but uh, if you've got a mobile one, you can buy some really good ones um, that have uh, battery operated. And the key thing is really the tip. You don't want to have a tip that is really big because you're going to struggle straight away to try and get it on the solder pads. Number two, you're going to want something to uh, solder it on. Now, this is a clipboard, an old clipboard, um, and you're going to want some tape to tape it down. You could use Sparky's tape, however, as it warms up, it might want to give up a little bit. Um, and I would suggest, um, rather than pliers, uh, I know you're going to have these in the car, that you have some snips. Um, so side cutters will probably do it as well, uh, but that's probably the tools that you're going to need to get started. The first thing you want to do is uh, get the strip into a good spot and uh, tape it down nice and firmly um, so that you can uh, more or less push with a tip while you've got the cable in the other hand and not have to worry about this moving around a lot. You could peel back the double sided tape, but if it is a dirty surface like this, um, like the paint's obviously dry, but it can cause the double sided tape to not work as effective later on. We're going to go ahead and solder little um, blobs of solder on here for want of a better description, and that's in preparation for our cable. So let's go ahead and do that now. So the key thing is I've also got some small solder here. Small tip, small solder. And uh, my suggested way is that I only just dab it onto the actual pad. Um, I typically don't really hold the tip onto the pad for all that long. It's not good for the strip to heat up too high. So you're gonna wanna watch your temperature settings. Um, all you want it to do is just flow in there. And uh, that essentially is uh, it completed for preparation. So uh, just make sure that they're not too big. You can always just run um, your tip off the end. If there is too much solder sitting on any of these pads, it should be nice and neat, uh, like so. Not too blobby, kind of just a nice little, uh, let me zoom in on that. Yeah, nice and small, smooth kind of uh, semicircle. Okay, so depending upon where you're running your cable from, you may have to use some of our RGB cable or you might just uh, get some figure eight cable. When you do strip your cables, uh, my suggestion is to make sure they're nice and wide uh, because these colors might not line up. And uh, I also always pretty much um, actually twist the cable because otherwise you can end up with fraying pieces of cable which can make cross connections. So go ahead and spin all those guys, make sure that they're nice and neat. Uh, if you really want to, you can get your pliers on there um, and uh, spin those guys around make them super tight. Either way, just make sure that they're nice and neat in preparation. So we've got just four of the cables so far. Um, the good thing with the clipboard is I can just kind of clip these guys here, um, or you can tape these down, but all we want to do right now, we don't want to solder them directly. We want to actually just tin these guys. So I'm just going to get the iron back out. And uh, because this is not a copper type cable, it does take a little bit more heat to get on there. And you want the solder to flow actually into the actual um, core of the cable, preferably. So uh, try not, again, try not to spend too much time on the actual cable because what can happen is that it can start to melt sheath. So once you've got, again, no massive blobs, if you do have a blob on there, just uh, run the tip straight up, get rid of any off the ends, and um, make them nice and neat, because the next thing that we're gonna do is neaten these guys up with uh, the snips. 
So, what we want to do now is make sure that we get all of these lined up um, nice and neatly, and we don't want massive lengths on these. So you'll see that I'll snip mine um, quite small. Um, I'll get the uh, calipers in a minute and uh, kind of measure those, but they're probably a couple of millimeters. Um, big thing here is you don't want cross connections. So I always try to stress to people, don't, don't put heaps of solder on the tips, don't put heaps of solder here, um, and definitely try to never go sideways if you're trying to wipe those, um, because I'll show you what happens. Uh, you, you can end up, especially if, let me just get back some of this solder over here. Oh, so you can end up with this type of thing. Oh, normally it's easy. You can end up with this type of thing. Where you get that, and you get it across. So the only way to get rid of something like that is to actually use uh, a uh, solder vac. Okay, so now we're going to solder these directly on. Um, of course, black is our positive on RGB strip. So I'm gonna go ahead here and uh, personally, this is the way that I do it. So I've got the end of the cable clamped down and because uh, we've pre-soldered these, you just wanna soften the end. It doesn't need a huge amount of solder. It's just a matter of getting the heat through the cable and onto the pad. You can feel it melt in and then you've made a connection. So that's quite strong there. And now we're just gonna repeat with the others. Okay, so we've gotta do the same now for the extra two terminals on our RGB hybrid. And of course, uh, we've got RGB cable here and the black is the positive in this situation. Uh, my suggested way uh, to try and remember the cable color codes, so I've just got another uh, pair here, is normally what I do is I will line the black up right against the other black and the red against the other red over there. Um, I do that because uh, for me, white, uh, the output color white is closest to the white and red is more on the Kelvin scale to the warm white. So I can remember it when I'm gonna go back and uh, connect it up on the other end. Um, however it works for you, just gotta follow the same process. So again, just uh, gonna melt that guy into the pad. Sometimes I actually like uh, just kind of move the pad around a little bit just to help uh, get the, uh, the soldering iron hotspot in the right spot. And uh, what you should end up with, with any luck, uh, can get a bit squishy around this area here. You may have to split the cables up. Just make sure that you've got enough space for your cables to slide in there. With any luck, it'll hold it down for you in the right spot. Um, you just don't want the cable to spring away. That's probably the key thing, especially in winter when the, um, the cables are starting to get cold. So there we go, there's all of our cables. You'll see my color codes, black, black, blue, red, red, green. However you do it, uh, just make it so it's easy to remember. It doesn't matter if you follow the color codes, like green doesn't have to line up here with green. You can always change it around so that uh, you could have red, black, blue, green. It doesn't matter as long as you're lining these up with the controllers. Now, a couple of things that you should test right now is a visual inspection. Make sure that there's no cross connections uh, from uh, any of these across. Uh, that can happen really easily, so just check for that. And then normally what I would do is I would uh, test this. I'd bench test it right now. Um, uh, and then I would also test it before putting it into, um, or the diffuser on if I'm putting it into profile. So test it now, bench test it, and then test it uh, once you have popped it into the profile. Uh, and the most important thing, the reason is because you just want to make sure that during the process you don't get any bends in this or perhaps a piece of solder falls on there or uh, it could be lots of different things. So test and test makes it always easy. If you forget the color codes, my uh, best suggestion to make your life easy, get a 9 volt battery, a little square one, and um, just to connect it between the positive and the colors and you'll find that that'll light them up just so that you can tell when you're wiring to make it really easy uh, on the other end. So this, uh, this of course is the 9 volt battery that I was talking about. 
Um, you need to definitely put this on your tongue if you want to be an Australian electrician, just to make sure that there's voltage there. But, yeah, okay, that's good. Yep, so we've got voltage there. Uh, now, if I grab the other end of these cables, um, I've got RGB cable and I know that the positive at least was on that one. What I can then do is just touch onto any of the other cables and double check that I'm not getting any cross connections. Um, it's a really simple way of double checking. So what it would look like if I was getting a cross connection is something like that. You know, I'd have two colors on at once. Um, so yeah, it, this is a great way I find um, just to check uh, color codes, but also to just double check that I don't have any uh, cross connections from anything. Um, so my suggestion is uh, have one of these in your car. Uh, you know, I've got a few meters on this roll. You can do it with any 12 volt strip, probably the 24s too. I don't usually have those. Uh, so it's a great little cheat way.